What's ICM again? No. Probably one of these. All right. Can't see my, can't see my mouth. I haven't seen your mouth in years. What's up? How are you? We're good. How are you? We're good. doing all right. We had some. Uh, we finally figured it out. Not the best with uh, technology, as you witnessed last time, Morgan. <laughs> you get to do, you, do you guys understand this stuff? Okay, yeah. Yeah, we got lucky. Is it switching back and forth like this? Yeah, in <laughs> some one of those talks. Oh, jeez. Yeah. We'll, we'll give you vertigo. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. Well, um, awesome. Uh, so we're here today to talk to, to kind of have a conversation about um, menu development, menu design, um, what we do similar, what we do different, our different kind of schools of thought on, on menu development in general. So um, I know we, we both uh, are very passionate. We, we care a lot about um, what we put on these, uh, what we put into these menus. So um, let's get started. And uh, Sean, do you want to start off with kind of, uh, well, first of all, I'm Jillian Bose. I'm the, uh, the, the parlor bar manager uh, for the Dead Rabbit in New York City. And uh, this is Sean. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> well done, Jillian. <laughs> um, so I'll just give you a, a bit of a, a brief on like what, why we do our menus our way and um, that type of thing. Um, so myself and Jack came from the Merchant Hotel in Belfast, and we did long menus. And our whole point of doing long menus in Belfast was uh, that if we don't have a cocktail on the menu, nobody will ever know to ask for it. Because Belfast was a bit behind the scenes when it came to all that sort of stuff. So if we didn't have like a, some sort of an eggnog or something on the menu, nobody would ever know to ask for a drink like that. So we had a long menu. And uh, when we came here to New York, like when we opened this bar two and a half years ago, um, we weren't planning on doing long menus again. Um, we decided we were going to do something else. And it was actually Simon Difford um, from Class Magazine. He said, like, uh, you've got to keep doing those long menus because that's what you're good at. That's what you're really, really known for. So it was basically Simon Difford that made us re like, rethink that whole thing because we, we didn't want to repeat ourselves. We didn't want to come to New York and do the same thing that we did in Belfast. But Simon Difford said, you should do that because that's what you're famous for. So we came over here. And that's basically why we did long menus originally, was because in Belfast, nobody would know to order a drink if it wasn't on the menu. Um, should um, I keep talking about yeah. these menus? Or? No. Well, I was going to say, um, Josh and Morgan, you want to? Hi. Hi. So uh, <laughs> Josh and Morgan, Trick Dog, the Bon Vivants. And it's an interesting counterpoint for conversation between your side and our side in that we have been explicitly on the short side of that equation and we had a lot of debate around the types of menu you know way prior to discussing format and creativity uh, but the length of the menu explicitly being not the long menu and i think that it's something uh, that is partially informed by san francisco culturally the types of drinks that were being made in san francisco i think both when morgan and i were coming up in san francisco there was the, the, the whole idea that was defining quote unquote mixology in San Francisco was the idea of the market fresh cocktail. We went through a big trend here where, oh, we're going to go to the farmer's market and we're going to bring it home and we're going to constantly be changing our menu all the time because this is California and there's an abundance of fresh produce and it's everything is fresh. And so when we were coming up, there weren't a lot of places that had the really, really, really long menus. And I don't think that we saw that until like bourbon and branch you yeah. know, sort of went down that road. Well, and then once bourbon and branch had done it, um, they, I mean, they did an amazing amount of work in training the public here. Um, and so then all of a sudden everybody knew 
uh, a ton of classics that they could order, you know, and so I haven't seen, I haven't seen a classic early on a menu in San Francisco in eight years, probably. Uh, just because they did all of that education for us. So then, and yeah, I think you're right. Then it was like, all of a sudden you have this drinking public who know the things that they like, are comfortable ordering a dealer's choice because that's the kind of relationship that everybody had developed with their bartenders and expect the the really specific, really fresh seasonal thing, which is funny because we don't do seasonal, but it sort of led to us having the short menu. Well, and do you think too, because of that, that um, like the consumers have, or, you know, your guests being more educated drinker is that, um, and you changing maybe a short list more often that then you have kind of a bigger library of like, so I like old fashions, I like Manhattans, I like daiquiris, like you have kind of, kind of more changing menu, menu that menu from previous drinks or, I mean, how often are you guys changing your menu with the short list? So, so in line with what I was saying, line with what I was saying before, we're getting, we're you getting, getting, are you getting, are you getting technical problems? A little bit. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, 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 we typically would we change it. We would change it. Yeah, that's really annoying. That's bad. That's really. Um, are you getting? Uh, are you getting? That's, that's, are you getting full feedback? Are you getting from, full feedback from? Yeah. from you kind of sound like an alien. <laughs> Hello. Sorry to both people. Sorry to both people who are. I know. I'm sorry, guys. Um. Um. <laughs> Can we start it and stop it? Start it and stop it again. No, because if you stop it, it will end it <laughs> completely. And then Jillian will be totally lost. <laughs> and then I'll just cry. <laughs> Don't stop it. <laughs> Seems to be a... Any that, ideas as to what the problem that, might be? Uh, uh, but it's better, what is better on how quickly it, or if you can change your menus and we'll try to that on our side. We'll try to on our side. Okay. Um, so as we were saying before, the um, we we are kind of no we are definitely known for our longer menus. Um, um, and with with the longer menu, we you know it takes a, about six months for us to develop these drinks and develop this concept, um, which is you know so many hands. Um, so many people are involved in, in doing this um, that, you know, we can we can work six to eight months on this menu that's going to be there for a year. Um, and with that, you know, right now we have 76 cocktails on our menu, which seems kind of crazy, but that's something that's on, on the list for, you know, 365 days out of the year. So, um, you know, there's something for everybody. There's, um, you know, if you are a certain, if you like certain styles of drinks, there's something for everybody over and over and over again um, within that. Um, and so with that being said, um, part of the menu design is not only the the creative part of this, the storyline or the, the look of it, um, but it's also how we fit those drinks into that. Um, and so that it's a diverse and well-balanced menu. Um, but I think what we were, what we were saying is that, you know, with trick dogs, you know, shorter list, um, maybe change you more often um, and our list uh, changing yearly with a, a seasonal insert that changes every three months to kind of um, really highlight the flavors um, that are accessible at that time um, or fruits or whatever it may be. Um, we, have, we have the opportunity to, uh, to have stability and have something for everybody, but also keep our staff um, kind of moving and keep keeping progressive and relevant and creative. Um, but other than the drinks, there's there's so much more that goes into that. Um, 
and maybe Sean can t start talking about like what the, the the initiation of the process of how we come up with these ideas and the storyline behind it. I mean, again, come back to the, the merchant in, in Belfast. When we did those menus, there wasn't really stories involved with the menus. It was more to do with just drinks, um, drinks done in a certain way. way. That's the way our first menu sort of was. It was broken down into drinks categories. Um, and we also attached, uh, like, because this area where we are in Manhattan, it's not really known for cocktails. It's not, it has a lot of history, um, but it's not known for cocktails. So we felt that we should maybe tell a little bit of this history through the cocktails, through the drinks. So the first menu that we did was basically uh, what was going on in lower Manhattan over a 40-year period, like between sort of 18... 1848 and 1884 when the Brooklyn Bridge was basically built or people were walking across the Brooklyn Bridge that's where we stopped it and we felt that people should know coming to our bar because it's historically themed um, people should maybe know a little bit about what was going on down here um, in volume two we sort of like looked into the the gang the dead rabbits um, we looked at a nine-year period of John Morrissey the one-time dead rabbit leader's life and broke, broke all the drinks down uh, in accordance with his like a uh, the emotions that he was feeling at that particular time of his life. And in this current menu that we have now, um, I felt that what was missing, we had, we had told the story of a dead rabbit gang leader, we told the story of what was happening in the area, and I felt the thing that was missing to make the whole thing complete was like a look at where Irish immigrants who came across at that time were living, and uh, like wh wh what the conditions were like that they, were, that they found themselves in when they came here. And I thought, I was really inspired by, uh, I read a book called uh, it was by Charles Dickens, American Notes for Circulation, or what it was called, and he does this thing called slumming, and he walks through the uh, he walks through the five points with a police escort, and it basically writes about it in his book. And I thought this was class, like from an outsider's point of view, somebody that could see things with fresh eyes that didn't actually live in the area, or, or wasn't from the area, or, or basically just somebody outside looking in. So we found we came across this priest, this missionary worker, Lewis Morris Pease. Um, and we thought it would be a brilliant uh, way to finish that was this priest who came in, seen what was happening and documented it in a, in a make-believe diary. There was no diary. We created that diary. It was all based on a Charles Dickens. And again, I think telling the history part is good as long as it, as long as it makes sense with the drinks and it's not too complicated for the customer. Um, do you want to talk yeah. about how you... Yeah, and it's also related to where we are in New York um, and, and kind of the, the ethos of the bar. So... Off that, you know, then you're like, okay, how did how did the drinks fit in? Um, but I mean, we can get that to that in a second. But um, maybe kind of uh, guys, your ethos on your menu design or your thought process behind how you come up with a with with your with your concept for each menu and how and how many times you change that a year. Sure. Uh, sure. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. Oh man. Oh, man. Uh, so, uh, we the menu. The menu. Was, was, uh, uh, and, and the concept, the concept, the concept is never necessarily tied to anything. It's, you know, anything, it's, you know, 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 have that sort of thing. It's, uh, we started out our first menu with the menu with the lots of books, lots of books, which happened, happened, more or less, uh, uh, by, by accident, by accident, it's decided to name all the, to name all the new colors, and then we're trying to figure out, trying to figure out how to put that out. Um, um, can you guys hear anything we're saying right now? Um, yeah. yeah, it's a little blurry, but I mean, if you guys just keep talking so the viewers can see, I, I hope that that's happening. Yeah. Okay. 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 Um, uh, but, so we were trying to figure out how to explain it, it and, and only realized that, realized that there's an existing thing that just thing that just exactly the, exactly the, 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 um, and as a result of the result of that, got into this got into the idea of, of the menus menus sort of uh, the person uh, the person recreating a recreating a different object, object, object but utilizing it utilizing it as as a uh, cocktail. Um, um, also, FYI, also, I'm FYI, texting people, texting people socially. He's socially, trying to figure trying out what the people are. So, 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 so. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, and told, I'm uh, you guys should not the right time to put your liquor order in, Morgan. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys want to try? Yeah, you guys want to try mute? Uh, <clears throat> All right. All right. Does that work? Um, 
No. Um, nope. <laughs> nope. Anyway. So, <laughs> Well, we'll try and push through it. Um, to discuss the idea of how frequently we change our menu, one of the things that we saw in San Francisco a lot was a change in every three months. So, in essence, changing along the seasonal lines. There are a couple of factors in for us to have a cocktail menu every six months. The first reason why we change every six months the first is reason we only we believe there are two months. seasons in San Francisco. We only believe in San Francisco. There is the light and bright the and part of the year, and then there is the dark and cold and fun part of the year. And, then there and so and rather and than try and fudge the fact that there are four seasons in someone else, we just go along those lines. Else, we just go along those lines. The second part of it was Fair we enough. felt Fair that enough. the second part of it was we felt that the so the second part of it is we felt that if we we weren't giving our guests we weren't giving an appropriate amount of time to fall in love with a cocktail or to understand craveability or to navigate the entire menu and grow the menu. We felt like six months was an ample period of time to really work with what we were putting out there at that point in time. We changed the menu on January 7th to July 7th. I totally get that. And do you find a, I know we have regulars uh, that come in and they have like a, an app on their phone where they kind of check off and rate the drinks uh, and they try to get through the whole menu. And uh, we actually give like, you know, them a, a little present uh, when they complete um, a section or um, the whole menu. I mean, 76 drinks is, is ambitious. Something yep. to, uh, ambitious. Yep. Very ambitious. But I mean, in the course of the year, they have that. But it's really cool. They're like, look, like, this is my favorite drink or this is my top 10. I'm like, oh, I only rated that one too, Jill. Like, work, you know, work harder next time. It's That's really funny. Cool. And, and you get to kind of That's know their, uh, obviously, their regulars, you, you get to know their palates and everything. But I think it's really, uh, really sweet to have people either, you know, that they, they have had the whole menu or most of the menu and they go back to a certain drink or a certain style of drink and you know it just kind of makes you kind of proud uh that you made something for them um and that they actually took the time to do like a rating system and an app totally. for it or whatever it may be that's um, very it's really cool um that is very cool. It is, it's, it's really cool. we have guests who come in and we the whole menu can put play the whole menu can put play <laughs> <laughs> So, um, so that I mean that kind of links, so, links on under the fact of um, like speaking of you know um, our guests like enjoying certain drinks or falling in love with the drink. It's like how are we going to have um, something for everybody so that everybody gets to fall in love with the drink? Um, and that's that's how you kind of look at your menu and like whether it be twelve drinks, six drinks, whatever it may be, or like we're doing sixty four in a seasonal that we change every three months. Um, it has to be something for everybody. Um, and you know we have that wiggle room to do kind of those kind of weird maybe more personal drinks like this is something that i'm making for me um or or not for me but like this is something that i would drink and this is i want to put this on the menu this fits and then here you know here are this group of drinks for the people that like something a little on the sweet side or berries or whatever it may be um you can have some that are a little bit more culinary um whatever it may be but you know how do you like we do what, what i call like a wireframe um, and um, I've done this back even a dozen company. Um, Alex Day kind of started me on this, where you just kind of put everything on, a, on like almost in a tree, uh, and you just kind of say, okay, how do I make this versatile? How do I, you know, you don't want to have you have say ten drinks, you can't have five or six of them be whiskey. I mean, I don't mind that, but you know, uh, but that's just not that's just not gonna work it's not versatile it's not it's not staying relevant so it's like you know just being realistic that that also coincides with your eth ethos of the bar like we're Irish whiskey um, driven for sure here but that doesn't mean all of our drinks are Irish whiskey we have plenty of mezcal and gin and rum and all that stuff but that's kind of our DNA but there has to be like if you come in here and you don't like whiskey you know you, you need something else to drink and believe me nobody wants to drink whiskey drinks all the time so it's it's nice to have that refreshing 
drink that hot drink that's um, kind of more culinary drink, that savory drink, all that. Like we have that wiggle room and that that uh, ability with the large menu to have those kind of weird drinks also. How do you guys deal with that on a 12 drink menu? Um, so we do um, actually a very so we do um, a very kind of a, a framework um, as you guys do a, their a framework as you guys do slots in that wireframe. Um, we sort of um, we uh, sort at this of point figured out the uh, structure point, that works really well. Out the um, that works really we well. always um, have we you know, two drinks, have drink, have uh, vodka drink, two uh, vodka a tequila drink. drink. Uh, another tequila drink or a mezcal drink, a couple rum drink or a mezcal drink, and then we always have ones that fall into the we always have. We're always going to have old fashioned style drink. We're always going to have a couple sours. We're always going to have a sort of couple sours. You know, sort of thing. You know, thing. And so we basically start out with a grid with the styles on one axis and the one axis and the. And the spirits uh, on the other axis, and, and then just plug them in. Um, and usually, what it'll be is usually what it'll be have a list of concepts for drinks that may not be tied to that may not be style or spirit. They're just flavor profiles. They're just and then that will and then fit into whichever whichever slot to whichever slot. So whichever you know, I really want to do a drink that has mustard in it. And then eventually you figure out, well, that's going to be the citrus driven mezcal drink. And furthermore, Oh, sorry, not to cut you off. Furthermore, we also know almost to the cocktail how each of those potential in the box will perform on our product. Like every time, no matter what, every time, no matter what, whiskey and citrus in some form is sell the best. And the drink with tequila and citrus is usually number two, three, or four. It's such a three or four. It's in the way that our guests respond to the styles of cocktails. And, you know, every six months, regardless of the other things that they're doing, they drive. Same sort of volume, volume that we have in the previous months. Previous months, we have we have what um <clears throat> what we call Doris drinks that you you kind of <laughs> they're kind of those best selling things you have to have. I mean, you have, like, when we when we do um like our wireframes, like you know definitely especially for the seasonals, it's like Jack and I will will give them suggest like give our staff suggestions of like hey listen these are things that are in season these are approachable right now like. Just kind of to get their their um, their minds going with with ideas, um, and it's pretty cool what they come up with. I'm like, listen, go to the farmers market, go to the spice shop, go to a bakery, go out to eat, whatever. Get inspiration, whichever way that you you can for this this particular menu, um, and and you know, obviously with a certain budget in mind, you know, come back and, and let's see what you got. Um, but being seasonal sometimes for me is like people are like, well, you know. Apples aren't seasonal right now, Jill. I'm like, but it's the, the the end product that has to, as a whole, be seasonal. Like, doesn't necessarily mean like just because cinnamon is in a drink in summer is not like blasphemous to me. Like, I think that's totally fine. Like, I don't, I don't think that should be restrictive. Um, I think that as a whole, like even for a seasonal menu or a short list or, you know, like our menu right now is divided by seasons for a whole year. But that's kind of to, to, to kind of direct people and I'm like, what are you feeling like right now? What do you, um, what, like, you know, what direction do you want to go? Do you want baking spices? Do you want a hot drink? Do you want to flip? Do you want um, something really light and crisp and dry and refreshing? And that's kind of the season. Like when you think of summer, you think of berries and you think of, you know, but there's a berry drink with, um, you know, Islay scotch in it. That's summer. Like, I don't think it should be so restrictive as, as some people might, might think. Um, I don't know if you. It, it, it also breaking it down into seasons. The big menu into seasons like that um, <clears throat> also makes it much more easy for the uh, consumer to navigate. For example, um, if I come into the bar in summer and I don't really know much about cocktails, I'm going to go to the summer section. I'm not going to go to the winter section. So all of a sudden, all those other sections don't matter anymore. It's just the summer section, and then it's broken down into: Do you want a boozy drink, a stirred drink, or do you want a citrusy drink? So it's really broken down into sixteen drinks. Um, it boozy and eat citrus um, and that's that's I feel that uh, having it broken down seasonally 
um, really makes it easier for the, the guests to um, navigate the menu. It's also a really interesting, it's also a really interesting dynamic dynamic when you look at people's menus, look at menus and you try and distill down and how much information the, from the bar yeah. is giving the bar is giving the on the menu on the menu yeah to help them navigate, help them navigate dinner drinks advanced drinks advanced summer drinks, drinks light drinks drinks, 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 drinks etc drinks, 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 you can go on sort of like on sort of like side, side of it and it smoke air air love etc and you have absolutely no idea what that cocktail what that cocktail is like what format it's going to be or you can or you can spell it out on the other end on the other end how do you guys feel your guys feel when you give it to a guest give it to a guest in terms of if they choose the cocktail off the list do you believe that they're ordering that they're ordering what it is that they're going to get I mean, sometimes it's not. I mean, that's 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 really, <clears throat> you know, reading your guests and you know having bartenders that can are able to do that. You know, like if I see somebody come up with a certain like, for instance, if I see somebody that I've already served before, they might be have a drink already from the tap room, um, and it's, they order something completely different. You know, I might just explain like, okay, do you like, you know, for instance, there's there, like we don't put like every single ingredient and their brand um, on this menu. Um, I've done that in the past. Uh, I work with places in the past that do that. It, it, it almost is overwhelming that way, I feel like. Like if you're just like Clear Creek, uh, Pear Williams Eau de Vie, you know what I mean? Like you could just write Pear. You know, I think that's just more approachable and, and it's like easier to read. But um, you know, definitely our, our menu is broken down into by the shaker, by the mixing glass. And if I see somebody ordering something because they like, for instance, we have a drink with, um, Pot Irish whiskey, celery, bitters, green shirt or yellow chartreuse, dry vermouth, and aquavit. It's it's kind of like a dirty martini drinkers like intro to to uh, to Irish whiskey like kind of thing. But if somebody ordered that, I kind of explain that to them. But um, and I there's certain drinks that you kind of know. It's kind of those like those kind of more culinary drinks or those kind of nerdier drinks uh, that you would kind of always make a point to say. Like, do you like this drink? Like, or if somebody, do you know what Campari is? Or do you like Negronis? And if they're like, what? You know, then I'll be like, try this. And they get the, you know, the Campari face or the Fernet face. Um, so it's kind of, you know, having your bartenders kind of know certain ingredients and where to, where to kind of ask those questions. Um, but I find that um, being a little bit more simplistic, but like pairing things with more similar ingredients, like um, we have drinks with, with say, um, Armagnac and, and bourbon and macadamia syrup and whatever, but if you put a strawberry in there, everybody's going to order it. So it's kind of you're introducing people to, to new things with, um, with with pairing them with common ingredients. And I, I think that Morgan and I were kind of agreeing on that as of last time when we were talking that that's kind of a good way to, to kind of develop people into uh, trying new things and, and and figuring that that kind of thing yeah, out. Totally. <laughs> Lose some of this feedback. Lose some of this feedback. Um, okay, I think, and I, think, I was told that you should maybe turn your microphone off. <laughs> I think that been told <laughs> you a lot. Too. Thanks, Maxwell. Yeah. 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 Um, uh, I think something that's interesting about all of these decisions is, is you know, and having you guys talk about like the big menu that. You get to spend your time with, and, time with, through, and also and with how much information you put on, and so on. So much of the time, so much of the experience of being in the bar is like, and it's an interesting question of like which which comes first. You know, it's like you know, it's like uh, a really big menu with a ton of information wouldn't work with Trick Dog because dog half is more sitting down, you know, you, you know, you have to be reaching over four people over the menu and making your decisions and making quickly. Um, whereas like you go for a second, it's like you get to sit at the table and you're comfortable and you're relaxed and you have more time with your time with your bartender. Bartender. Um, and so, you know, so, you know, we're not going to do uh, a lot of stuff, a lot of stuff because we don't have time. You know, you know, you're going to take advantage of, advantage of the, the luxury, the luxury of the time there, time there, increase their, increase their, 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 their,
with her style menu and vice versa, how would that actually affect actually if the blues had grown into it? Um, uh, it feels it feels now it feels like it feels like walking to what concept of the bar is. But I think that I think that because of the decisions that we made about the menu to begin with. <laughs> did it, did you hit any of that? I'm just, I'm I'm really trying. Um, I mean, I get I get what you mean. We don't we have that we have a sit down policy. Like our menu wouldn't work in something that was a standing bar or a, like a like we are high volume for our cocktail bar for sure. But um, because you know we are we're a busy bar, but there's no way that if if you weren't able to sit down and have a maitre d to sit, they tell you, you know, what. Now I'm getting into your volume off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no. Is, uh, is your microphone? Did you switch the microphone on? The microphone's on. Remember you switched it off? Yeah, see? Um, sorry, guys. Um, no, but it would never work. I mean, you can't have, I think, you know, in your kind of bar, like in your bar, it's much more high volume, like, um, it's standing room, you know, like I, I feel like, yes, if anything more than, than 12 to 15 drinks would be, would be outrageous. It would be too confusing. Um, here, you know, you have that time, you have that, Oh, I'm going to sit here. I'm going to be here for a while. I, I'm getting this explained to me. I can, I can read, you know, a bit of history. I can, I can really fall into the room and, you know, uh, you know, be kind of, you know, read the story about it. But, you know, if, if you were standing up, I mean, it would be a very good investment for us to, to do these menus and have people throwing them on the ground and or you know reading them or pages getting ripped out like they're they have to be you know it's a whole different situation it was uh, angus winchester um actually was the first person that ever said if you're going to have a big menu you need to have a small menu also and so in um all the big menus that we would have in the merchant we would have a quick list at the very very front of the menu like 10 drinks as, as uh jillian called it something for everybody doris drinks something that everybody will actually like um and currently, the way it works in these menus is we have this insert menu that changes every three to four months, um, and it's 12 drinks. That's where most people order from that, have, that are not used to the big menu. The big menu is aimed for the cocktail people. It's aimed for the people who travel all over the world. Um, on top of that, as Jillian said, we have, a, we have a other bars downstairs, the tap room. Um, the tap room has 12 drinks, 12 cocktails. They're, they're what we call high street cocktails. They're not nowhere near the standard of upstairs, but they're still very, very good for that type of bar. And we actually sell more cocktails downstairs than we do upstairs. I'm just listening to Jack tell me this last night. Um, that's the, the sort of volume we sell downstairs. It, it, but in saying that, to be honest, the top room is open many, many more hours than the, the, the parlor. The parlor, yeah. the parlor is open from 5 till 2. The top room is open every single day from 11 in the morning to 4 in the morning. Um, so yeah. it's, un it's understandable that it sells a lot more cocktails. But we also feel that that takes a lot of the, uh, the pressure off. People come to our bar, um, they've heard about cocktails, and a lot of people... They've seen they've seen press and stuff like that, and a lot of people are satisfied with the drinks downstairs. They don't really know much more about cocktails, to be honest. Yeah, but it's, it is. I mean, you know, it's somewhere for when we do have a wait. Um, I mean, I enjoy hanging out in our tap room just as much. I mean, probably better than any bar ever. But um, you know, it's it's that standing room. It's that kind of pub crowd where you know you have a menu. There's twelve drinks. There's a beer list. We have them on chalkboards. Like that works. What works in your bar is really important. You have to be realistic about it. Um, you know, like we're realistic about the fact that our first and third floor, the, the menus work there and they, the parlor menus would never work down there or the bar set up for that menu. Uh, the mise en place that goes into it. Um, also, like, you know, our menu takes about eight months to design with the, the, our, the, with the research and development with the drinks. Um, and that's like tasting and it's a very democratic process. And I know, um, I know you, Josh and Morgan, you guys kind of have done that um, as well, like the democratic thing, or you guys, you know, based on what's going on in, in the bar or whatever, and your, and your businesses, like, you know, what, you know, what is like for, to have a democratic system of making drinks for 76 drinks. Like, I mean, if I had to make 76 drinks on myself, I would, I would just jump out the window, but you know, I, I need my, I need our staff to help. I need feedback from them too. Like, I mean, if all the drinks were, were drinks that were created by me, I mean, it would be like, 
beating a, a dead horse. You know, I would not necessarily, I don't think that, but uh, you know, it would just, you need that kind of other perspective. You need those other ideas that I, you wouldn't think of. Like, I think it's really important to have a democratic process. Um, I don't know. What do you guys think about the democratic process Making drinks, like being a, a team and uh, making drinks together and getting feedback from, from each other? Um, we um, actually done, 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 done menu has menu been has like been a process of, process of collaboration. collaboration. Uh, one was uh, wildly collaborating. Uh, uh, collaborating. Uh, Josh, myself, Scott, uh, Josh, myself, Dad. Scott, uh, and then it seemed like everybody we knew came by for like everybody we knew came by for process. Process. Uh, and then there's been uh, some menus that were basically me. Uh, there's been some that were. Uh, there's more stop or some that were uh, people with bartender on staff, all of us were bartenders on staff, all of us were um, things. Uh, and I don't know that there's one that works better than another. I don't know that there's one that works better than another. I would say that the menu that was more driven by the menu was more successful. Because there was nobody to tell me that ideas were nobody to tell me that ideas were uh, and then so we ended up with a drink with one ball in it. Um, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but I think that we're, we're evolving that process uh, right now. Like this uh, many right now, many that we're working on right now, that right now, that right now that has the most collaborative since the first one. The first one. But I think that there's a balance. There's a balance. Can't become a victim to over democratization. It's like it's you like, have the right people, the right people, right role with the right role with the, at the right point, the right point in your career, becoming a part of that a part process of that, at the right time. Um, in order to, I totally, I totally agree with you. Yeah, I mean, just put totally it out to your whole right staff and let them write the menu for you. Write the menu for you. Yeah. Just to elaborate a bit, uh, when Jillian says that a menu for us takes anything from six to eight months, how those six to eight months would be broken down, for example, is uh, Way before, way before any drinks are even thought about, um, it would be me and the designers in Belfast, Drinksology. We've used the same drinks, the same uh, design firm for the last 10 years, way back in the merchant as well. Um, we, would, we would come up with the concept, the direction for the menu, the, the theme of the menu, and there'd be so much backwards and forwards between us and them and illustrators and all this sort of stuff that goes on and on. And I'd keep these guys very, very much informed in that. And then when that, when that all seemed, when we finally get the story part together, I would sit down with Jillian and we would go through all the brands they want to use in the menu. Um, so that's a process. And uh, then Jillian would not just get all the other staff involved, it's getting the other staff involved, but around these brands, this is the brands we want to use. Um, and then her process takes over. And again, this, this process, up until Jillian actually makes a drink, it's probably four months before that, uh, that we've actually started making the menu. And it's basically me and a designers backwards and forwards, keeping these guys in the loop. And then she just takes over and I have nothing. The only, the only other part I would have after that is uh, I would involve myself in the names of drinks uh, yeah. because I think naming is part of the brand. Um, it's not just the way the menu looks. Um, I want uh, the names, the names have to be strong. What's that? No, she said turn out my audio down. Are we loud to you? No, you guys are fine. We're just fine. We're just getting echo back. I echo suck back. at technology. <laughs> <laughs> I suck. Really. I rely on her, so I'm, I'm totally sucked. So this is just great. But that's the only other part I would, I would have in the end of then is uh, just, I, I like the guys to come up with uh, their own names, obviously, but naming is very, very important because if it sounds, if it sounds daft, nobody's going to buy the drink, and that's just the way it is. Um, so I would help in that element um, and that would be me done but the drinks part is Jillian and Jack just taking over you know actually we're naming drinks right now for uh, our insert and we got some funny ones uh, 40 <laughs> elephants absolutely not absolutely. see see this is the sort of this, this is the sort <laughs> of that that people put to me. <laughs> calling a drink 40 elephants I mean what, what the hell are they thinking you know? <laughs> We've, uh, we've made the naming convention really easy for ourselves with our menu choice. Our menu choice. It's like, you know, like, we had a calendar menu, calendar menu. January, February, March, January, February, March, August, September, October, September. Yeah, you had it easy there. We had, <laughs> we had a Chinese menu, Chinese number, menu. One, number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number 12, you know, et cetera. And it sort of informed the continued creative evolution of how we were choosing formats of the menus, 
because part of our next meeting that's launching in January is the same sort of convention. There are 12 or 13 of some things that is generic, and those will be the name of the drink. They logically follow the sequence that's tied into what the creative format is. It's been sort of funny, like watching how people respond to different names of drinks. Like when we did the horoscope menu, naturally most people turn to what their horoscope was, what their zodiac symbol was. If you're a Capricorn, you usually order a Capricorn. Then maybe you order some other things after that. On the calendar menu, if you were born in October, you flip to October, and then you order in October. So it's been interesting watching the way that people engage with the way that people engage with the way that people the Chinese one you work with? What's that? How did the Chinese menu work when it was numbered one to twelve? Uh, well, it was hilarious because <laughs> the Chinese menu was the first time we put photos of the drinks, and this was like a tremendous sort of like black office analysis for us. Was how does having a photo of the cocktail affect the way that people are going to order and their understanding of what they're going to order before they do it? And so. So, I think that for the first time we were seeing people order from the perspective of this drink has a big ice cube in it. I like drinks with a big ice for the big ice. I want it. No, because I want that one. Like yeah, exactly. I don't care. The that menu was also the most we've ever sold of them. Sold of the bell drink. Because our martini style drinks never rank as a martini. Um, they look like a martini and I drink like a martini, but you know. There'll, you know, there'll be 85 ingredients 85 in it. It's like a sandwich, but it's actually a but it's um, And um, that was the first one where there was a picture of it. Just like, oh, right. Like, oh, right. I like those. That looks like those. Thing the, the funniest thing about the Chinese thing about the Chinese is we extended the numbers extended the all the numbers. way through every other part of our menu. Every other part every of our menu. non-alcoholic drink, non-alcoholic drink, 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 boiler maker, drink, cheeseburger, drink, fries, et cetera. Had a number. Had a number. So people are walking up to the bar people looking at the bartender. Up to the bar I'll have two number fives, a number I'll seven, number five, 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 a number seventy six, a number sixty eight, and a number forty two. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> like, oh my god. what do you got to do to us? That's too funny. That was fun. No, we, uh, thank, uh, thank goodness uh, a lot of our everything comes from the floor. Do you guys um, want to try and tackle some of these questions that have come in here? Well, yeah. Were all the questions? I don't see the questions. <laughs> okay, we got some here. Yeah, so here's one. Uh, other than your own, which is your favorite menu out there at the moment in the way it's structured and presented to the consumer? Um, I'd say my favorite that I've seen recently is Mace. Uh, in part because it's really beautiful, and in part because they, I think they've done a really nice job of presenting the information uh, in a way that drives your understanding of what the drink is probably going to be like, um, and just, just, I like the, I like the, I like the decisions that they've made about how much to include, how much not to include. Yeah, I like, I like that it's, um, you can kind of tell what you're getting into by the spice, and um, that there's, you know, they give you what you need to know, and it's, it's typically a pretty good, uh, uh idea of, of your drink that you're going to get and i think it's a fantastic i think nico and his team are making some of the best cocktails in new york city for sure what do you think i favorite? mean um i hate so i'm biased uh but i do like green rivers menu um there's other menus that i do like but i would just like to talk about green green rivers menu um it's it's one of these sort of menus that uh there's history there if you want to read the history, but you're not sort of forced to read it. You have to open the page to actually look at it if you want to look at it. Um, and it's broken down into uh, the base spirit that goes in. So all the drinks, it's four drinks per page, which is very, very easy to navigate from a, from a customer's perspective. So it's four drinks per page broken down into the base spirit. Um, we give this, the base spirits like personality types. Um, so for example, a rye personality we looked at different uh, meanings for the word rye, and maybe the word spicy or something came up. So we then looked at different interpretations of the word spicy, and we give rye a personality type based on the word spice, for example. Um, and then the drinks, the, the cocktails would have been people's names that fitted that category of the, well, that personality type of. And then, sense. like a story about that person that yeah. the drink was named after. And so you sp- the story about the person, you sort of have to open it, and it's only there if you want to read it on the on the uh, page that you get. 
it just basically says the cocktail name and the ingredients. That's it. Um, inside, it'll tell you more about who the person was, how the drink got its name, but you have to sort of want to read that. It's, uh, it's, you're not forced to read it. And I just think it's very clever. It's well put together. Um, another menu that I've seen recently, I've only actually seen it online, to be honest, but it's uh, very, very impressive for what I've seen is uh, Oriel in, uh, oh, yeah. in, in London. London. Um, basically the, Are they open, the now? Menu, open now? Yeah, they opened a few weeks ago. So it's uh, the new Nightjar bar um, for the guys that own Nightjar. Um, it's, it's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful. It's, it's photographs, the way you were saying, but uh, the photographs in this are absolutely stunning, stunning, stunning. Just like their playing cards would have been, but it's in, a, it's in an album, like a, like a photo album type thing, and it's got a beautiful little story of every single drink. Um, I just think it's very clever, well put together, and I think any consumer coming in will definitely buy with their eyes while that menu is concerned. You'll see the drink, and that will just blow your mind. The way, the way it looks is the way it will be presented, and you'll know what you're getting. I just think it's very clever as well. Cool. Any other questions? Yeah. Can't we yeah. can't see the questions. Just make that clear. We've got a uh, quick one here. If you did not sell the menus, could you afford to do them? Um, um, we're selling our menu right now. It's the first one that we've had for sale. Uh, but it's not helping us in any way because we're giving all the money to uh, uh, animal shelters. So it's costing us. When. You know, as Morgan said, yeah, this was the, uh, the first menu yeah, that we decided to sell, and so, sell and so uh, we figured uh, that we, we could discourage people from stealing them by guilting them on each page. And Morgan said, you can write on each page all proceeds from the sale of this calendar and go to Family Dog Rescue And I go, no, you can write on each page. You this menu, you're killing puppies. We didn't write that, but we'll probably end up giving... Ten thousand bucks, bucks to uh, to the dog shelters down the streets, and I think that, and I think that um, um, from the perspective, from the perspective of, of selling things uh, for charity, it sort of plays right in line with some of our other philanthropic ideas, ideas, you know, with and punch and whatnot. And what it also brings a lot of goodwill in the neighborhood. It allows us to reach us to reach people that maybe haven't been in before or in the present building. We've even done things where things dog adoption, the adoption, wedding marries at the bar, and things like that. So it's so, been cool to sort of play around that thing. We sell them to cover the cost of yeah. Get stolen. <laughs> we 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 sell ours to cover the cost of all of them that get stolen. We're <laughs> 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 terrible. <laughs> Just kidding. No, we like, we do charity. Like, you gotta understand. So every night uh, we get this report from the staff, and uh, it lets us know who was in that night and any problems, any maintenance issues, and it basically says. Sold three box sets, sold four menus, stole four menus. So whatever we sell, <laughs> somebody else has stole the same amount. It just covers the losses, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. You're like, excuse me, like, I'll take that menu back because we have a, a very good system on how we keep track of it. Um, very systematic approach to, to knowing that no matter who's looking at the table or who's approaching the table or the bar, that, you know, I know the, that that's in your bag. So we're, 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 our new menu moving forward is going to be slightly different. It's not going to be a hardback book that, that costs a lot of money. But what we're going to do this time is um, we're going to get 23,000 of them printed. And uh, it's meant 23,000 is meant to last six months. So and we're going to sell them all for $5. So um, be a comic. it's going to be a comic. Um, but we expect to sell a lot of them for $5. We don't expect people to steal too many of them. And um, with the $5, it's just going to pay for the new menu. That's the way we're going to work that. Cool. So if we if we sell half that amount, if we sell eleven thousand, which I think is a realistic expectation, we, if we sell eleven thousand, we we'll cover the costs. Yeah. A, men, a menu costs us about sixty thousand dollars, you know, and it's mostly illustrative work. It's the it's what goes on inside it. Yeah, yeah. We, so uh, is that what you're getting out for? You have to pay me because you illustrate. No good invoice here. Um, there's a couple of questions. There's a couple of questions that I think relate more to you guys, and I will just lump them into one question. But there are your opinions of overwhelming your guest with such a large menu, and also another question that says, where do you draw the line with how large you want the menu versus where you stop it? And those are two different questions. But two different people. Okay. Um, I mean, you want to talk like where, uh, how the menus approach? No, like I'll, talk about, I'll talk about the, uh, the, the so, stuff. Um, so when, when the guests arrive, uh, we have a maitre d', um, 
and bless her soul, she, you know, paces a room so that she has the time to explain the menu and that um, our servers and bartenders can explain the menu and take the time. And it, it sounds like, yes, it's, it's a bit crazy. It's a bit time consuming, but that's kind of the pace of the room. I mean, uh, people get their drinks within 10 minutes of them sitting down. We aim for, um, we have systems in, pla systems in place for that. However, um, you know, you get the menu, here it is. It gets laid out in front of you. It gets explained how it works. Um, you know, this is the story of Lewis Pease. Some people think it's, you know, who, who's Lewis Pease? Okay, great, I don't get it. But all they need to know is once she gets to the point, it's 30, 30 to 40 seconds for explaining how it works. Um, you know, it's broken down by season. Think of years of this season and what, what's the best suitable for you. And then by then, it's by the mixing glass, by the shaker. Shaker is going to be more bright, refreshing citrus. Glass could be more spirit forward. forward. Think Manhattan Martini, old fashioned style of drinks. Um, but look at the flavors included in each drink. Um, if you don't like, and we also say like, I look at them. I can I look at the guests when they sit down. And I say, hey, you know, you don't have to look at that if you don't want to. You know, we can just have a conversation, and that's also why we have um, the insert menu too. Because you know, here's a short list of of you know kind of hyper seasonal cocktails uh, that there's something for everybody. So you can peruse through that, or talk to your bartender, or you know, enjoy the book and look through. And uh, that's kind of how we approach that uh, the overwhelming part. So they part also of, get um, part a of your service model is service to model. demystify the length of it before they even open the menu before based on the things that the server is saying to them. The server is saying to them. Yeah, I mean, kind of, and you also like you sit down, you get waters, you get punched, you kind of you're in this room, you're looking around. There's a picture on every square inch of the wall. There's it's cozy, it's the music's going, and it's like, you know, you get this thing, and you kind of fall into it, um, and you explain how it works. Granted, I would say 70% of the time they don't listen. Just, just this, saying. I mean, so you have to repeat it probably twice. And this is where I think memes are important, to be honest. Um, I think when you're looking through something like this, um, all these pages, and you're glancing down very quickly, because the first thing that's going to hit you is the name of the drink. And then, if that takes your fancy, you're going to read the rest. But I do think this is where names are very, very important, especially if you've got a long menu. The name has to stand out. That's yeah. why I'm always arguing with these people. What was that? 40, with these people. Forty-four <laughs> elephants, like you know. What would you rather? What would you rather drink a drink called Moby Dick or forty elephants? You know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. But where to stop? It's uh, 64 drinks in these menus currently, but we're taking that right back. So this menu changes once a year. As Jillian already said, we have the insert menus that go in every season, which is 12 drinks, 10 drinks, 12 drinks. 12 drinks. So that keeps the bartenders in place. But what we're going to be doing next year moving forward, every menu is going to, it's pretty much like what you do, guys, just after listening. Um, it's every six months. Um, we're going to release a new comic. Um, it's, it's basically a comic called The Dead Rabbit. It's a continuing story of this person. And uh, it's set so that people can identify with it a lot more. It's not like 18, 15, I'm Still very dead rabbit fame, but it's going to be going to change every six months, and there's going to be no insert menu, and there's going to be no hardback book. And we're hoping that this takes the customer to where they want to go even quicker. You know, yeah. and it will be like it will, the, the comic will start a lighter style and progress to darker, richer. So it can kind of be like if you don't want to read, just go into the middle of the book and be like, I, you know, it can kind of be very easy for them to navigate. Um, people can read the book because they won't be very straightforward. It won't be this. For a minute, kind of, I like I said, uh, our maitre d is amazing. Like she has to repeat this little forty-second story. You know what? It's like a night. Like I, I, I go crazy. Look, listening to it sometimes. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, so it's kind of a leaving and all that, and it's it's also kind of the bar and that we're we're looking to the future. We're looking to stay, you know, to stay relevant to. To have our drinks to our, all the, you know, I guess you could say, and you know. The, the last thing we want to do with these menus because they're all books. Um, three of them are enough, but uh, but uh, doing it any more than that is like uh, it becomes a bit boring, a bit repetitive. Then, and uh, the last thing we want to do is bore people because um, I don't. The last thing I want is somebody to say, "Oh, another new menu from Dad Rabbit, another new book." So. It's going to change it completely. It's going to be a completely new direction next year. Yeah. Any other? Sorry, guys. Is there more? Is there more questions? 
Let's scroll through. Most of the comments on here are talking about how everybody in the world thinks we can fix our technical difficulties. <laughs> I'm sorry, Josh, I couldn't hear you. <laughs> oh, this is this is a good one. Uh, do you think menus need to stay in print and go digital? Do you think they could go digital? Do you think menus need to stay in print or that they can go digital? I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, I like holding something, seeing something. I mean, I that would just be. Me. Yeah, I I mean, yeah, I, I, I guess you're talking to guess you're talking people who produce things made on paper all the time. So we might all be biased in this. We might all be biased in this. I feel like, especially in San Francisco right now, especially in San Francisco, there would be a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a lot of subtext to making it digital to that is not necessarily something that that I want to be encouraging on the bar. It's like. Uh, bars like it's the place to go for the rest of it. From all of that, you know, it's if I had it my way, we would have I had lead wine in the bar, so nobody would get any cells to do. Do yeah, I I don't think um diddle's gonna work. I mean, at the airport they have those, right? Yeah. yeah. Did you I've gotten this? at a restaurant oh, I've gotten an iPad <laughs> wine list. No. And yeah. I felt like it was press button. I felt like it really pulled everybody at the table away from each other, and it gave them a distraction rather than conversing with each other. And they would continue to post up the iPad and look through it and play with it. Um, but I wasn't a fan of that sort of format. Yeah. No. I mean, it's like we already have everybody's cell phones already on the table. It's like then adding that and you know, the whole thing of like, hey, let's order together, let's talk about what we're going to have, let's, what are you going to get, what are you going to get, instead of passing around an iPad and pressing a button, I think, uh, I think it, like you're taking away even more than what we're already lost with this kind of. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody just dropped a cake. <laughs> <That's fun>. Um. <laughs> uh, Here's one. Um, what are your thoughts and opinions on having space for mixers, beers, wines, and having them tie into your brain? Having them tie into your brain. I didn't hear that. Uh, oh, sorry. Um, what are your thoughts and opinions about having space for mixers, beers, wines, and having them tie into your branding? Branding. Um, we've we uh, always have we've, on our menu all, in addition to the cocktails we have the beer and wine, the beer and dairy and non-alcoholic non drinks, non um, drinks, and uh, what else? Boilermakers and low proof uh, option. Makers, uh, low proof option. Uh, and, uh, I mean, yeah, you know, it's all it's all curation. Um, yeah, you know, it's all it's all curation. Um, always try to tie the format into the, the format into the, the menu. Um, menu. Um, and then you know, there's a lot. There's, there's a lot. lot the beer list says about what kind of place it's always, it's always been really important to us that we have really really nice, interesting beers, but then we also have a three dollar can of Tecate because we want to be announcing to people that it's the kind of a bar where it's okay to drink a three dollar can of Tecate because where it's okay to drink a three dollar can of Tecate. Um, it doesn't need to be so precious all the time. Yeah, it doesn't need to be so precious all the time. Yeah. No, and absolutely. I can't hear you again. But uh, no, I mean that's kind of the beauty of of this bar. We have the downstairs. We have the tap room that you can get, you know, any of your kind of um, domestic beers. But we have some great cast stuff on. You know, we have the we have Cascale. We have um, craft beers, up, and we also have the cocktails and precious stuff. I think when you guys started, you guys had like a whole wine list and everything, and it just did not fit the place. It's like, be, again, going back to being realistic, like what, what are, what is, what is the demographic? What are, where are you realistic about it? Because you're going to just, 
blow your money. Like, oh, having a beautiful long wine list is amazing. But you know what? It's at the end of the day, it's not it's not what what works for your bar or it does. So it just it, you know. It's all about. Yeah. <laughs> There are a couple more there questions, but unfortunately, we won't get to you. And I felt and like this was really cool and really I inspiring. This was and really inspiring. I really enjoyed talking with you guys. And hopefully, you guys just take us out of the digital realm and set up a panel discussion in person in New Orleans where we can all do this back and forth as actual human beings without any digital interference. Without Digital interference. Yeah, I, well, submissions were up yesterday, so. <laughs> I, I think right. somebody who's listening probably has veto power. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, sorry about the, uh, you know, this is the first time that we are if there was complications with volume and, and glitches and that, but we'll, we'll work on the next time. I'm sure that the ladies uh, and gents down in New Orleans will be working on this. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Good to see you guys. Happy holidays. Bye. Happy holidays. Yeah. Bye.